Um, David, actually, we, we talk about a lot about entrepreneurship, but really what you're doing is what you call, and actually since you've mentioned that, social entrepreneurship. I, please tell us sort of the big difference between sort of the social entrepreneurship and sort of broader Silicon Valley entrepreneurship. <clears throat> sure. So the dictionary definition, entrepreneurship is you're creating a business to generate money, profit. That's all you care about. Social entrepreneurship, correct me if I'm wrong, is not only do you care about the profit, but you also care about the social aspect of what the business does for you. An example that I remember when I first got introduced to the idea was Tom's. Every time you buy a pair of Tom's, Tom's gives a pair to someone in need. There's, although there's like other uh, uh, unfortunate consequences to that, but in general, society is better off than if they didn't do that. So that's the difference between social entrepreneurship by dictionary. Personally, what I've been seeing is there's been more of a merge between social entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. I remember when I was young, when I first got started, I read a quote somewhere. It was something about, <coughs> Muhammad Ali said actually, it was, the service to others is the price you pay for your room on this planet, on Earth. And I think companies are more getting close to that idea where it's part of their mission, not only to generate money, but also do some societal good. Example of that is like Apple. 100% of Apple's facilities are run on renewable energy. Or even a big a car company, Tesla, in the Bay Area, their sole mission, if they're to succeed, is to convert all of us to electric cars. So for them to succeed, it's also part of making society better. So that, that's what I, I, I view as. <coughs> great, great. Thank you for sharing that. Now. Before I ask the last question to Sanjeev and, and then coming out to ask you guys questions, or you guys are, you know, the time for interaction. So please, uh, you know, think about that, the, the questions you guys want to ask. Sanjeev, uh, my question to you is, you know, I think you mentioned at the age of 28, you really have seen the impact of how medical science have changed lives. Now, the, the, the latest thing that you're doing, actually, in fact, you, you actually also spend quite a bit of time traveling to China as well, right? Please tell us the latest thing that you're doing. Why are you so passionate about this particular project, so, company? So this company, uh, as I would mentioned earlier, it's a point of care diagnostic system. Um, literally, as I said, uh, healthcare is not available to the millions and millions and millions of people out there. Uh, when you go to the villages, there's no diagnostic centers uh, in tier three, tier four cities. Their people are, as I said, are dying uh, without a chance for cure. Uh, breast cancer, which is our first product we're working on, there's about 1.6 billion women over the age of 40, and uh, going down to the age of 30, there's over two billion women, and only 60 million are screened and it is known that if you can screen these women early, you can find breast cancer early and you can save their lives at a very, very low cost. Very low cost. And so about 60 million women are screened every year, less than 4%. If you were to screen, and, and out of those 60 million, two and a half million women are found to have breast cancer, half a million women die every year of breast cancer. These are the statistics by WHO, not by us. Now if you were to screen all two billion women, you can imagine, extrapolate, how many women are probably walking around with breast cancer and how many are dying every year. And there's no reason that they should. It just needs to be found early. This technology at Lawrence Livermore was developed for the lab. It was a PhD project this girl was doing, and she went and got a, she, she won a business plan competition uh, in Sacramento, but it never went anywhere. Um, and this was something which a Quest diagnostic could pick up. I came along. And I saw the technology and I said, okay, this is great, but unless I bring it, we can bring it to the community, to everyone, it's not going to help. And so saw something what Sandia was doing, UC Irvine was doing, and we said, well, if we marry these together, you'll have something which can make a difference and we can take it 
into these villages. We went into China, we went into Africa, we went into India, into the villages. And what you find in these cities, in places like Mumbai or Beijing or Shanghai or uh, some of the major cities, you've got people who come from these villages and they're sitting there for waiting five days, camping out to get their turn. And if they miss that turn, they will not get another chance to see the doctor for another couple of months, at least. And so what we are talking about is we will take it over to these villages that they don't need to come in, they don't need to get diagnosed in the hospitals through cloud connectivity. The doctor can see it somewhere else. The test can be done locally. And these people don't have to leave their homes. Our goal was to make the cost so low, less than $2 a patient for breast cancer screening, which today with mammography is over $200. And if you can do that with breast cancer, you can do it with any other disease. We can do it with cardiac, we can do it with TB, we can do it with dengue, doesn't matter what. And now you can start changing people's lives, helping them, right? The thing which we care about most is the health for our family. Can we, can we give them food? Can we give them shelter? These are the three basic necessities. And so that's why this is, I'm passionate about this, that with this we can make a difference in people's life. We can bring health care to everyone. Um, this is also for Andrew, and I'm Rachel. I'm a junior from Mission San Jose High. I was just wondering, how is it like growing up in a like, not uh, growing up in an area where there weren't, weren't that many Asians, like, and compared to here? Yeah, and it's one reason why I, I look at you all, um, and I just think, like, wow, so lucky. <laughs> um, so, it, it, I, I was like one of the only uh, Asian kids in my grade, and I, I'd skipped a grade, so I was very small. Uh, and so I felt this need to try and prove my um, belongingness and masculinity at every turn, um, <laughs> which, you know, didn't work out that well a lot of the time. Um, and I also had this urge to, like, stick up for myself anytime someone um, called me, uh, you know, a gook or something like that, which happened quite often. Um, and so I don't, I mean, I guess people aren't allowed to say that stuff to you guys now, but like, I mean, I got it like all the time and then I would just be like, okay, I guess it's fight time. And then, um, and then because I was smaller, I would lose most of these fights. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, I guess that's a fairly reasonable description of most of my, <laughs> most of my formative years. Um, but then, uh, you know, I, I think, um, I ended up. Uh, developing like a real sense of I identity um, through that, I believe, a bit of a chip on my shoulder too, um, and I, I also have, I think I have like a, a better empathy for people who find themselves singled out or marginalized, and so I'm very grateful to it on that level. Uh, hello, my name is Maxine, and I'm uh, a freshman from American High School, and I think for me the key takeaway is um, the mindset about what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Because I always saw entrepreneurship as being very daunting, but today I kind of saw it as just the mindset that you have to know that you have to step up and have the courage and just think that I need to make this happen and it won't happen unless I actually do it. I think that was the key takeaway for me. Well said, well said. Give her a round of applause, please. Okay, we're gonna, thank you so much for sharing. That is great. So we're gonna have a, a, a guy to, Share a little bit of that. Thank you. Uh, introduce yourself, Henry. Um, okay, my name is Henry Xu, and I'm a sophomore from Washington High School. And I think what I learned today here is that, um, like, I've always had this problem where I didn't know what I was going to be. And I think a lot of people in this room, like, also have this problem. Like, they don't know what they're going to be, and they see everyone else, like, all the adults around them, all the people around them, like, their peers they are already doing stuff, they're already doing more th than them. And, you know, it builds a kind of insecurity. And I think, like, I found my solution today when um, David, like, said that there's always this moment, like, when he found the moment when he knew what he was gonna do. Like, I also thought that, yeah, I'm going to find the moment where I know what I'm going to do, yeah. Thank you very much. Well